Facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. Hello, and welcome to Conman's Current Events Roundtable. Today, we're welcoming back one of my favorite guests, uh, and I always hope, David, you will be coming back forever. I, I really enjoy you, Dr. David Hacker, who's a chemical engineer, and today we're going to be talking about unintended consequences in modern technologies. That is a mouthful. What is unintended consequences in modern technologies? Well, let me give you a couple of examples. One that stands out in my mind was the a destruction of the Hindenburg, if you remember that back in the 30s. The Hindenburg was a master zeppelin that crossed the Atlantic and was landing at Lakehurst, New Jersey. <coughs> In the process, one of the problems was that uh, what was unforeseen is that the dirigible was filled with hydrogen, which is a highly inflammable gas. Well, as they were unloading, something happened and it triggered a massive explosion and burned the Hindenburg. And I remember the comment made by the reporter on the site who said, oh my God, this is the worst event I've ever seen. <coughs> <laughs> Maybe it was the worst he'd ever seen. But the prospects of events that are unforeseen are more than likely. Everything we see, I can list a whole series of them. When we go back in time and we think about a massive explosion in Galveston, where a sodium nitrate was being brought in on a ship, had ignited. No, nobody anticipated that. It wiped out the entire community. Given that, and then we go on, we can think of other instances where this is where we call it an unforeseen event. We could not have planned for it. <coughs> the, the Challenger event <coughs> that was a result of uh, gaskets that leaked and destroyed the launching of the, of the Challenger. And uh, there are enormous numbers. We have the Valdez event, where there was leakage from a freighter, an oil freighter, into the harbor at Valdez, and causing one of the worst uh, spoils of water imaginable. But we had only to look ahead. What happened when we had <coughs> the deep water drilling in the Gulf of Mexico? <coughs> Well, David, it's always foresight, you know, we can't, you know, everybody wants to be the first to um, have their name uh, in highlights uh, and they want to accomplish something that somebody never did or never thought of. Uh, and it's actually, there was, there is something that is going on and I heard it on the radio and then I passed it on to you and that's when you know, when David, when David sees something, he doesn't just tell me. I have to read about 20 pages to find out what David is thinking. And there was a man that, um, that was talking about on the radio. I'm not sure if I caught his name. He's a... A, 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 a member of the faculty. Yes, of he's, an, he's an engineer also, right? Or, in, or physicist. And <coughs> he, um, he wrote about... Uh, injecting, you know, we're having, because of our weather, we have such, we've been having such unpredictable weather, like her, terrible, terrible her earthquakes, hurricanes, 
uh, all kinds of things that's going on with our weather. And this man from Harvard felt, hey, I'm the one that's going to fix it. I have discovered by injecting sulfate aerosols into the air, I could fix this and I could predict what kind of weather we're going to have and I could tell what's going to happen before and I could also control the weather by injection of sulfate aerosols. So David, I got this paper and David told me these are the unintended consequences that if he does such a thing, this is what's going to happen with, with the following. And what it is, all these things, are, it's going to be changes in the color and brightness of the sky. Uh, there's going to be a delay in the migration of atmospheric onzo loss. There's going to be an increase in acid rain. A uh, warming of the um, in, in, in the, the sulfate injection steps, uh, decrease in the amount of power production from concentrating on solar collectors. There's going to be increase in plant protect. Pr pr it's going to be increase in plant productivity, which we'll talk about, and health effects, negative health effects by doing this. And here he is. He's so happy about in his injection process that what 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 is it david why are they why did he not do any research on this or his research didn't give him the unintended consequences well let's put it this way that many physical scientists and others really when they plan a project <coughs> they're to some extent they try to understand all the implications of what they're doing hopefully but what I find surprising is that this gentleman at Harvard who apparently did not do the proper investigation to find out what the consequences of injection of uh, sulfates into the atmosphere. How could you tell, tell, what is, how could he inject sulfates? How do you do that? Well, he goes up in, a, in an airplane or and deposits a, and blasts out a storage of uh, sodium sulfate. Now, the sodium sulfate has some advantages in terms it reflects light. Uh, it also obliterates some of the sunlight coming through as a result. Uh, but basically, it's, it has been tried before. Whether, I, whether he identified that is beyond me. I didn't read his, all of his material. But his optimism in it is regarding the way it will work is, uh, to me, I think, very faulty. Um, during the Reagan administration, we were concerned about sulfur in the atmosphere, acid rain. And one of the things... Which, which, which acid rain? To acid hear? rain. We were concerned about the impact of acid rain in what, the atmosphere. What is acid rain? <coughs> in other words, what happens is the sulfate is absorbed, moisture absorbs the sulfate and becomes acidic. Okay, and this comes down as uh, down rainfall. Mm. And, of course, it uh, acidifies uh, lakes and, and oceans, of course. Uh, <clears throat> the consequence of, of acid rain are not particularly desirable. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have to recognize, what are you trying to do? You're trying to alleviate some of the problems associated with climate change. Great idea. The problem, though, is one of how do you best do it without inflicting some dangerous aspects to your experiment. Um, that, to me, bothers me more than anything, because at the present time, we have some information regarding the deposition of sulfates into the atmosphere, where studies that were done during the Reagan administration on acid rain. Remember, one of the comments that Ronald Reagan made at the time on acid rain was, we have volcanoes. Yes, you got volcanoes that are spewing out sulfurous fumes. So we know what the consequence is. Now whether this guy, who I dare say probably, uh, with all best intentions, has found a way to, to at least convince his supporters that this is a novel way to go about it and it will relieve some of the problems associated with heating of the atmosphere. I don't know. I mean I find that 
what, what he has overlooked, and this is an, a glaring as an examination mm -hmm. of unbelievable consequences that may occur. And whether he's answered those questions, I have no idea. Because they mentioned that it would, not only about, not only about acid rain, but health consequences too. Negative, you know, fossil fuel burning releases. Everything uh, we throw up into in the, the air. atmosphere has a, an effect on the atmosphere. There's no doubt. I mean, we have only to look at our attempts at, air, at clean air. What has been done in order to alleviate the problem that existed before? Mm -hmm. Well, what we did is we presumed that we essentially reduced the amount of emissions. We are done an enormously incompetent job in essentially cleaning up the atmosphere. Now we wanted to spoil that. We want to put in sodium sulfate and you're going to make a, a difference? Oh well, please, this, at this point I would say, let's move on to another subject. Mm. But you know what, uh, we, we, in, in negative health effects, uh, by doing this, the pollution particles currently affect health and can lead up to more than 500,000, 500,000, David, premature deaths per year that is worldwide. An estimate. That is an estimate. That is one consequence that mm -hmm. has to be looked at. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All of these things are imagined results of, and this is what I call an intended consequence. You don't know what the actual reality is. We cannot predict... Yeah, how the would they know? How do they know that's going to affect five hundred thousand people? Now, whoever wrote this on the negative that's right. Health you you asked that question. How do you know that? Yeah. Right. Exactly. I mean, what we see going on is this uh, uh, essentially an attempt on the part of both sides. You know, it's like the deniers of climate change versus the uh, supporters of climate change. I mean, why is there such controversy? Nobody has proof. Yeah, because he hasn't even put it in the atmosphere, and I got all these, what's going to happen, changes in the color of the sky from, uh, it's going to be these dull. We, know. We, put, we, we make a model, and everything we do to find out what the consequences would be, we build a, a mathematical model, okay. which may or may not be correct. The mathematical model is a predictor, and that's what we have been doing all along with everything we know. We prepare some sort of mathematical, or we do it, and experiment to find out what the consequences are. So there are two ways. You can either prepare a model, a mathematical model, which doesn't include all of the variables, mm -hmm. or you can do an experiment in which you perform what is going on and see whether or not he's right. <coughs> and that is where I find myself. You know, at, at this level of controversy, I, I find myself in a position of really saying, I really don't know. You know, what I, what I, what I, it's interesting. How could he change the sky? And everything? I mean, first of all, he goes up in an airplane. That means he can go all over the world. And, no, and he goes over to specific locations and deposits his uh, sodium sulfate yeah. at a particular batch. That consequence of his, his disposing of that sodium mm -hmm. sulfate essentially affects radiation to the Earth's surface. Because if you think of it, you know, a particle is the problem. I mean, but what you've induced essentially is acid rain, because that's what the sulfate responds to with water vapor. So, you, you know, you, you can say, well, we ought to try it out and see if it makes any sense, or we can say at the outset, this is a ridiculous. Yeah, because it, it, it sounds kind of far-fetched to me, and I'm not, you know, a chemical engineer, um, and I'm not a whatever it is, geoengineer, which is, we're talking about new terminology these days, what is a geoengineer? A geoengineer is someone who wants to play around with the atmosphere. Okay, so he's a geoengineer. He thinks since he's, he is, yes. since he Since he's trying to play around with the atmosphere. Right. And... You know, um, it's kind of, you know, maybe the atmosphere, maybe we're getting more, um, you know, hurricanes or more earthquakes or what have you. Uh, supposedly more. We don't know that because years ago it happened also. So yeah, but it the isn't extent to which it's happening now, there are some evidence that the atmospheric content of carbon dioxide has increased. This is one of the manifestations of global warming, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Well, would global <coughs> warming have happened on its own? We don't know. See, they say... But my supposition is it would have at a different level of speed. Mm -hmm. The rate at which it's occurring now is a result, as many scientists have agreed on that, that the amount of carbon dioxide deposited in the atmosphere <coughs> is reaching proportions that are dangerous. Okay. So so they think it's something that we're... Now, whether this is the case yeah. or not, this is, again, a problem because we have no evidence other than knowing what carbon dioxide does in the atmosphere. It's a reflector. It reflects energy. Okay, so that in the radiation inward, the carbon dioxide doesn't matter, allows heat to come in, but on the reflection out from the Earth's surface out, the carbon dioxide is a blocker. It tends to prevent radiation from leaving. So that means you have an accumulation of heat near the Earth's surface, and that's basically what well, they argue is global yeah, warming. Yeah, former President, uh, Vice President Gore, Al Gore, he thinks otherwise. Well, how does Al he Gore, A, is how not a scientist. His, how does he get he his has input? No, he, has, he has relied on scientific input. The question is, is Al Gore correct? I mean, he's made a big an issue out of this thing in trying to convince people that he is right. You know, everybody tries to convince someone that you know, I know what the answer is. There's a problem. I, I think that, that maybe we are overzealous in attempting to argue solutions that we are not certain of. Hmm. And so uh, people aren't anticipating, they're not really... Um, uh, they're not, like you said, risk analysts. They're not really going into, uh, they're not really working it. You know, they just assume, uh, like look what happened uh, years ago, um, women that were uh, nauseated or sick to their stomach during pregnancy, thalidomide. That came out saying mm -hmm. the same thing. Another That's thing, right. oh, it's a safe drug. And look what happened. Children were born without arms, without right. legs. That was a consequence that was unforeseen in the development of a drug. <clears throat> now, when you think about it, you know, science is a very funny thing. Most people, A, do not understand the nature of, <coughs> of the scientific method. This is big, the biggest problem I see today, is that they don't understand that the prognostications of scientists about certain things are based on a small amount of evidence. Now, those who see it as, a, an, as evidence for supporting their points of view should essentially believe that is correct. That's the way to do it. There are others who say, no, you can't do that. This is not what is really happening. We have no way of uh, you know, extending or predicting the changes that we might have. Why? I'm, I mean, when you think about it, you ask a question. Mm -hmm. Is there any solution to people solving problems then? I mean, if you said everything you do is, un, is going to force in an unforeseen event, you wouldn't do it. But let's face it, we do a lot of things. Well, a good example right now is fracking. Right. You know, fracking has was another program was an amazing, in my mind, is one, an amazing piece of technology in this generation. Uh, it had relieved us of the problem of importing gas. We know what the advantages have been. On the other hand, we have now seen that there are certain aspects of fracking that essentially are causing slight tremors in the earth because of the increase in pressure, local pressure. Now, is this good or bad? Is it dangerous? Is it something we have to worry about? Is it of inconsequential evidence? that it, yes, indeed, it's happening, but it's not serious, okay? So you've got a lot of questions that you have to ask yourself. Now, when we look at the way fracking has developed, we have seen the initial arguments were don't do fracking because it contaminates water, it does this, it does mm -hmm. that. Various issues were, yeah. were arising. That's what the People who said. work at that field learn they have to listen to what's going on around them. They have to find out, is that really a problem that we have to solve? <coughs> and for the most part, <coughs> they have done that. And what is unimaginable today is that the advantages that we have developed in fracking are unbelievable in what we thought they would be, let's say, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> what do we do? 
we, we know that there are consequences to what we do. The problem is, can we allow for the unforeseen events to occur and correct them? So people need to, first of all, they need to, what worked in the past may not always apply to but, a current but situation. We know, that. we know that science moves mm -hmm. on. You know, that it's interesting. <coughs> <coughs> What's interesting is to realize that at the turn of the century, there was an important uh, physicist who was at the University of Chicago, and his comment was, this is the turn of the century his comment of the 19th to 20th century. Everything in physics has been discovered. We are now at the point of simply looking at decimal points. Mm. Okay, was he right or wrong? Well, obviously he didn't know what the future was going to be because think of it, theory of relativity came in after that which changed people's view of the universe. All kinds of events occurred systematically in scientific breakthroughs mm -hmm. that were not imagined at the time. So someone who is unwilling to recognize that the world continually changes, and we are really only, I would say, observers, and we have to accept the fact that we do not know the answers. Our ability to make long-range predictions are faulty. And with that, it says to me, you've got to be very careful in how you do things. You have to, the, the consequences, like recently, uh, we're all more or less hooked on to Facebook, and look what's going on. There's an all the info, Look at the information that look, uh, people's privacies, and, uh, it's, and, you know, I was wondering why I was getting so many pop-ups when I go on my Facebook, what, let me because ask. they got everything that I'm interested in, and I, I keep getting, so they're, they're into my privacy, and we, everybody thought that, hey, Facebook, oh, this would just be between us and our friends and our family, but it's going to a lot of advertisers, it's going to a lot of different people out there. You have to be very careful when you when you go on Facebook, who's getting that information? Well, when you the consider, may, may I just interrupt here? When you consider that the internet is a widespread communication network in which anybody can put anything into it, okay? Doesn't that tell you I have to safeguard my privacy in the way I use this? I claim that Hillary Clinton was ignorant of the consequences of her emails. Mm -hmm. uh, and how the system works. And how it really works. Right. Just recognizing that nothing is secure. Now, my original view, and I'm a, I don't a, a negativist right. on this, I yeah. always said, I said, you know, one of the things you cannot rely on is email. <coughs> email is available to anyone who wants it. Now, if you think that's a secure way of transmitting information, you got another thing coming. So, we have, and what happens is the obvious, Facebook is a wide, well-respected, wide information distrib distribution device, right? Until you find out that somebody has used that information and misused it. Now what do you do? Are you going to go in after it with a policeman and stop him from doing that? No, you can't do that. We were talking, <laughs> we were talking, sorry, David has a cold today. We dragged him out here to do this show. And after you, I tried uh, feeding him at Bluegrass a nice hot meal so that, um, that he'd feel better. But we did talk about this today. I even said, um, I, by the time the show airs, my, our, my, one of our daughters will have a new job. And I said, whatever you do, I said, don't put that on Facebook until you actually have the job in hand. Because if they see something, an employer sees something that they don't like or that they read upon on Facebook, maybe the job won't be yours. So be very careful uh, about you know what you put on Facebook because you don't know who's going to see it. And oh, it could be very detrimental, my, my and that's an unintended consequence. You're right. I have always wondered why young people today have so enjoyed Facebook and all of the other platforms without thinking of the consequences. 
I mean, if they are worried about privacy, they have given it up a long time ago. I mean, you know the extent to which various sites have been used for various kinds of activities, whether the, it be showing your picture or doing whatever you do with it, this is not something that you want to do. I mean, you know, common sense would tell you this is not the way to secure your information if you're concerned about it. Mm -hmm. If you're not concerned about it, you might as well just publicize it. <coughs> and you also have to worry, like, if you have grandchildren, be very careful about using their names because you don't want somebody, like a small child, if somebody, a, you know, a sexual predator, um, looks at Facebook, sees the child, now knows their name, and then uh, waits for them after school and calls their name and said, hey, your mom... But if you know you that, know, you've got to be really to tell careful. your children, let's be a little careful about how we use this. This is not an admissible way to handle your information. Now, whether you like it or not, whether you think it's convenient, which it is, and you can, you know, and you communicate with your friends very easily, but what, the, what else is going on? And we know already what the consequences of most of these sites are. Mm -hmm. That people will, no matter what you think of them, they will misuse the site. They will misuse whatever's in there be to their advantage. So, you're stuck. You know that the system is enormously competent, enormously, uh, uh, you know, uh, in terms of its ex ability to be used for everything under the sun. Where do you stop? What do you say? I have to be cautious about something. <coughs> so, I, I can only, you know, uh, admonish those people who feel that they can get away with this. Mm -hmm. And you have to be very careful. What, so the self-defeating prophecy or the fear of some consequence which drives people to find solutions before the problem occurs. I think that's what people have to think. Before they put themselves out there, they got to think of, hey, if I put myself out there or I give out my material, what is the consequences that can come back and haunt well, me? Well, this is an issue of privacy, isn't it? Where do you want to put the level, the, the, the barrier down? 